here's what cognitive scientists look for when designing tests. To start, test the entire capability you're measuring and nothing else. Don't make a general arithmetic test without subtraction problems, or a grammar test where you score higher with neater handwriting. For AI benchmarks, ensure the questions weren't memorized, are on topic, and have no unintended patterns, like how in one multiple choice benchmark, shorter answers were more commonly correct. Tests that work across different environments and groups of test takers are more useful, like a test for both humans and other great apes. For AI, this might mean tests usable for AI models with various skill levels, specializations, or architectures, or even by AIs and humans and animals. Finally, your test should predict real-world capabilities, like how children who excel on memory tests learn new words more easily. A basic prediction for AI benchmarks might say how well the AI answers real users' questions on the same topic. More complicated predictions could say how the AI improves with more training or other enhancements, or how well its skills extend to other topics. Cognitive scientists consider these parts of a test's validity, in particular, construct validity, how well a test actually measures what it claims to measure. It's hard to meet all these criteria, even when testing humans, but the more valid a test, the more specific and confident we can be using its results to make predictions. We also want specific, precise working definitions of the capabilities we're measuring. Ideas like theory of mind or common sense reasoning have their own implications, history, and associations from cognitive science. Defining these terms rigorously has helped develop better ways of assessing them. Using them improperly might convince us an AI has other capabilities or even moral standing when it's unwarranted. Or it might conceal these systems' real power, 